Well, little Tumba, as we suspected, might be a bit thirsty and has now come and had a little drink from Twin Dams. I wonder where he's going to go from here. He was facing southwards and then he decided just to come down the dam wall and you can see now he's having a really nice drink on the edge of the water. And he's been watching some of the terrapins as well and I think he's a little bit unsure as to where he actually wants to go from here but it looks like he might go back up towards the dam wall. It's quite a common characteristic of younger leopards. They often like to use height and to be able to see so from the termite mound to now up on the dam wall itself to be able to see what's going on. So I'm going to just quickly reposition ourselves so that we can see what's happening. But look how he's, oh that's quite cool, he flattened his ears just to look over the dam wall itself. So he had his ears down and he was just watching what was going on on the other side. There we go, now he's decided he's going to carry on. Now I'm just going to try and see if I can't get onto the other side of the dam wall and then hopefully we'll have his little face peering over. He's such a beautiful leopard that if we can get the front of his face that will be absolutely perfect so let's see what we can do i'm sure we can it's just going to require a little bit of ingenuity on our behalf and a bit of maneuvering to try and see now i don't want to stop this side because of the light so i'm going to try to see if i can just get around a little bit here let's see if we go and we park right here it should be absolutely perfect How's that, Craig? I think Craig should get a good view on that. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Now, I was saying earlier that being eye level with elephants is one thing, but being eye level with a leopard is extra, extra special. So, we are being spoilt by little Tumba today, as normal with him, though. He is an individual that does spoil us. this he's coming straight towards us isn't this cool you can see he's a little bit unsure about all these thorn trees you went the wrong way boy there was a nice big open gap for you look at that is that not magnificent and you can see the back of the car hello boy and he has such a beautiful golden mane. Now, hopefully he's going to stay still. Now, Craig's just trying to move as slowly as possible. He doesn't want to scare our little boy. And there he goes. Kimberly, you're wondering how big Tumbo will get. Well, Kimberly, it's never an exact science. We don't know for sure how big he'll be. I can tell you that he is going to be quite a large boy. I would imagine he's going to take after his dad, who we think is Tingana. He's got that same bulky appearance. He's already developing quite a deep chest area and a big head, and he's got massive feet for his age. So I would imagine that he's going to be quite a large individual, but difficult to say. Look, you see, now he's seen the Franklins, so he's going into stalk mode with the Franklins. Let me just reposition us here. Yeah, Craig because the Franklins are there they're running the wrong way so I'm just gonna try and get a little bit of a different area quickly just so that the Franklins we can see them if they go towards him and we can actually watch his expressions because it's always so great when you see leopards hunting their facial expressions are priceless so I'm just gonna try and see if I can't get us just here now the Franklins themselves are busy running around all over the place they're both in front of us and behind us so we'll be able to see perfectly from here there we go Craig there should be a nice gap on his face there we go so you see how clever he is already even though he's a young individual he's using those tree stumps which is not very much cover but because he's right out in the open those at least provide some sort of fraction of cover that he can use and then he can be able to start stalking towards Franklin's a young leopard of his age is going to be feeding on Franklin's quite predominantly at this sort of time he's going to learn to hunt on them he's going to run at them he's going to stalk them and that's all going to stand him in, in good stead for later in life when he's now going to start hunting things like impalas that fleet footedness that he's going to have to practice to get hold of something like a Franklin is going to be very helpful when he targets the small mammals like Diker, Steenbok and varying others. I think the Franklins have moved off and that's why little Tumba has stopped really going into a stalking pose. You can see he's got his head up now and he's just watching what's going on and watching the coming and going of the vehicles that are in the area.
Bobby, you're wondering if leopards can have the same spot and ID patterns. Well, Bobby, no. So each leopard has a unique spot pattern. So whether it be the spots over the whiskers or the spots around the eyes, you might find two leopards that have a 3-3 spot pattern, but th the arrangement of those three spots on either side of the face will be unique to that leopard. So they'll never be exactly the same. And there's a Franklin that's actually running straight towards him. Look, here comes the Franklin. I don't think the Franklin has seen him. There it goes, across the road. Is he going to pounce on it? No, <laughs> he's a bit unsure of all of this now. Look at the tail. Now the Franklin, I think, has seen him. Look, he's growling at the Franklin. <laughs> so he's been spotted and the Franklin's alarm calling. He's now growling at the Franklin to tell the Franklin to keep quiet. <laughs> you silly boy. And you can see the whiskers going up every now and then. What are you doing? Yes, tell that Franklin to go away. So you can see he's been spotted and the Franklin making that noise means that he's lifted his head now, he's no longer hidden and therefore he's telling the Franklin, I'm here, you've seen me, I'm going to try and now sort of not stalk you anymore and stop squeaking at me and leave me alone. I wouldn't be surprised if he actually gets up and moves now because at the end of the day, that he, now that he's been spotted and the Franklin's making noise, that gives his position away and I'm pretty sure he's going to want to move. There we go, he's now moving towards us. Isn't that beautiful? Seems like he likes the back of our car. He keeps walking right near it. And I think he might just head into a little area just behind us that we know that Hussan and Shungile love as well. And he might go into there for a bit of shade because it's still quite warm this afternoon now that the sun has come out as well as it's really good cover. So he'll stop all of these vehicles and Franklins and all of those kind of things really getting too close to him. He can get into a thicket like this and it will be the perfect camouflage for him to be able to then hide away. I don't think he's going to move too much once he gets into a thicket. I think he's going to try and sit there and watch what's going on. I don't think he'll move. There we go, let's see where he goes from there. I think this is where he's probably going to end up settling. And we'll try and see, there we go, I think into that thicket and lie down. That's where I reckon he's going to spend his afternoon. So while we try and see where little Tumba goes, I believe Brent, the lions have stopped fornicating and are now moving around and are, sounds like, on stalk mode. <laughs> 